So what else do you have for us to experiment with? I fried some anchovies a week ago and I had the oil left over, so I threw some green beans in there for fun. This may be really gross. Let's try it. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> this might be my favorite. We're going back to school. We're here in Eugene at the University of Oregon with Christopher Hinden and Doring Pennington. Today we're gonna to be working on a bunch of different experiments that are going to push the industry of coffee and the industry of beverage as a whole. We're in the Willamette Hall atrium. This is kind of where a bunch of different science buildings connect. There's a human cadaver lab in here somewhere. Ooh, that is so cool. They do exist. How so, does that, what does that have to do with coffee? What that has to do with the coffee lab is all of the campus tours come in here as their first stop and they always say this is where we are perfecting espresso and also where we cut up bodies. That's <laughs> so, fantastic. That's like the two quips that they get and then they walk out the door. Never do the two separate. Yeah, this is the coffee lab. It's giving coffee bars. I'm assuming people walk up and ask you for drinks like all the time. All the time, yeah. all the time. Do you ever make people coffee? Only if I like them. That's it's what cold. I do with latte art. When people say, oh, I want a specific design, I just pour nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know how to do latte art and I just pour nothing. I see you got the Black Eagle. Got the Black Eagle, we got some grinders. We have a water treatment system, a batch brewer. We have all of our coffee over here. Is this where you keep the bodies? So, oh. <laughs> here's our freezer. Oh my gosh, there's like more underneath too. It just keeps going. It goes you all have the enough to like fund the apocalypse. Like yeah, <laughs> this is our, our survival stash. And here we have some more analytical stuff. We have our laser particle size diffractometer. This is like a vintage one. This is a tank. Sure. And what does it do? Uh, so you have a laser, some particle passes th oh, through the beam and makes shadows on a detector. Oh. And then you measure particle size that way. Based on the size of the shadow. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I'm grinding all of the coffees I'm taking the data of at the same fine on the grinder back there. So it's around like 1.5 on our grinder. This thing is the compressed air we use. It's cute, we just got a new one. And so I'm just gonna run this, and it's quite loud, so. Oh. And see, you can't even see it go through, it's so fine. You can't even see it go through, you're yeah. so right. All right, and so it's on this peak right here, so this is like the super small finds, and then a lot of bigger finds. Mm -hmm. And so we are sifting out exactly this piece right here, and smaller. So what this shows you is that actually the finds dominate the surface area. Super tiny Comes little finds, fines. which and like so you can't even see in here. So we're using this to help us understand if there's a different way to make espresso than the way that we currently do. So basically what we're doing back here is electrical impedance and that's this setup that basically pumps amps through the water at different frequencies and then measures the resistance of the, the solution. Essentially, you're trying to find a value for the TDS through the conductivity or? Yeah, basically. You oh, can relate cool. them to one another. So people care about this a lot, for example, in batteries. This is the exact same thing, but what is this going to do to the taste of my coffee? Right. <laughs> which is arguably much more important to society. <laughs> uh, I think so too. I think too. so, yeah. We can ditch batteries. They don't even let you take them on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Does it make a smiley <laughs> face when it's done? I'm just kidding. I wish. <laughs> I'm like, that would make it so much more rewarding. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> it could be like The composition of my water was happy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is a, a lot and you seem very passionate about it. How did you find yourself in this world? I came to the UO as a chemistry undergrad and I registered a little bit late, so I couldn't get into any of my chemistry classes unless I took this thing called a fig, which Chris just so happened to teach, and it was called Coffee, Chemistry, and Culture, and I hated black coffee. And so I just showed up and I was like, Chris Doran, like, can I get like an internship or something? And then they all laughed at me. Just <laughs> like that? Just yes. like that? They just yeah. laughed and they were like, uh, just come do research. Yeah, you just show up yeah. and start doing it. And so that's how I got you here. You have to inject yourself. So it's actually not like that big of a lab, but you have everything really contained, hidden, yeah. kind of like inconspicuous. It's kind of fun because then I get to do barista cosplay. You know, I don't have That's to wear, right. I don't have to wear like a lab coat and the glasses sure. and look insane. Sure, you insane. don't an apron yeah. on. Yeah, no, I just put put my music on. That's right. Make coffee. Coffee hour. Coffee is what you're hour. Doing? So twice a week, we serve coffee to people for free. We just batch brew it, and it's a good opportunity for us to get to know people. It's like a nice break for a lot of the grad students around here. So anyone who's in the university just comes and they, they people know can about walk this, in or? off the street. I mean, we've had people come here because they heard about us on the radio. This is a really cool thing. You have a lot of people here. It's like imagine if your favorite cafe was also where you work. 
Because we're in this building where all of these different science departments kind of intersect, it brings a lot of different people in here. So It really is like a central hub, because like, yeah, exactly. they literally all lead to the same place. It's like in a video game where you die and you just like respawn <laughs> right here and it's like That's safe. Funny. Yeah. You want to do a little latte art throwdown with me? I'm going to have Chris judge. Let's just do any pour you want. This is like in the movie Santa Claus. Yeah. If you defeat me, you become me. Oh, wow. And then I host You become the rest a world champ. That's yeah. exactly what happens. Yes. <laughs> let's go. Let's get competitive. Right, Where's your right. cup? What are you going to pour him? Much in the same way that I approach science. I don't like to plan it too much. Oh. I'm just going to vibe it out. That's fair. Looks gorgeous. Looks gorgeous. It looks really good. Oh, that's really good, Dorm. Like classic. That's actually really beautiful. It's pretty good. I'm gonna do a Rosetta. Right. I'm gonna meet you in the middle. You're gonna fucking destroy me. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm a Our kind, instinct. gentle soul. Let's do it. Maybe this is my one competitive edge. This is where you can sabotage me if you really want to. I wouldn't do that. I know. Oh, I don't know, Doran. You might have beat me here. Yours has more openness. I don't know. A little more contrast. Oh, I got more contrast, but you got more shape in the inner leaves. This is a tough one. Symmetry of this one's bad. This one, contrast is bad. This one has to be the winner. <gasps> no, don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. Doran, it has to be. <laughs> it, just... <laughs> it has to be. Cheers. Pink. I love the way this community just loves coffee. I love what you guys are doing. How did this all happen? 2014, I was involved in writing Water for Coffee. And I've I, read that book. You read that? Yeah. Maxwell and I were just thinking that there's a lot of science to do and he convinced me that we should put that out there in the world. And then when everybody started reading this thing, I was like, well, there's a lot more people than expected. Coffee science is not that good. Right, and there's not that much of it. Not that much, and it's usually over-inflated outcome from a poorly designed experiment. And so what we did is we built this out and started trying to make just simple, simple problem and make reproducible shots of espresso. And if I can make this single shot taste good, and the next one also taste the same as the previous one, that actually has a trickle-down effect that goes all the way back to the producer. You need an outside perspective, mm -hmm. and that's like what you've tailored this entire space to be. That's what it is. That's so cool. Imagine you've just brewed a cup of coffee and it tastes terrible. Well, this next groundbreaking discovery, you won't have to dump it out or sip through the pain. Instead, Chris and Doran are using electricity to change the flavor of your coffee after you've brewed it. One time, we had all these samples set out. We're doing this type of work on it. And we went out the back and came back and someone had drank one, just like a drive-by. <laughs> they just took like the whole thing. Yeah, they just it. got it. They just That's took wild. it. And this is a instant Robusta coffee. Mm -hmm. I can smell it from here. Oh yeah. Roasty yeah. toasty. Roasty toasty, a little woody, a little fun. Mm-hmm. How when's the last like time you drank old... this kind of coffee? It's been definitely over a year. <laughs> Years, okay. Yeah, I don't really tend to go for instants. So if you can make this taste good, that's a, you know, that's a valuable thing. That'd be groundbreaking. And so our working electrode is this carbon rod. Oh wow, you're doing this by hand? Yeah. Emily, how about you hold it? I'm not gonna get shocked, So you I? see this little coil? Okay. So just hold it by the little insulated part sure. and just dip it down. For this coffee, we did a lot of testing to figure out what tastes good. And something that we liked for this coffee particularly is a negative voltage. You're taking flavors that have oxidized as the coffee is aged and you're reducing them back to their original form so they taste fresher. Right. But that's just a way to think about it. Chemically, is that exactly what's happening? It's gonna take more work to figure that out. It's almost like a time machine. Yeah, you could think of it that way. You're freshening the coffee somehow. So you have one without the effect and one with, and we're gonna taste the difference. We'll start with this one. Okay. Whoa. Okay, 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 wait. This is like car tires. Yeah, this is oh, like I'm really rubbery. Oh, I'm getting the rubbery. car tire now too, actually. Yeah, leathery. Leathery. Yeah. Smoky. Old, like old, smoky yeah. coffee. The other cup, it's still got the red cherry thing mm -hmm. going on, but the red cherry flavor is now the flavor and the rubber is not the flavor. So we're gonna get out a super expensive geisha and we'll do the same thing. And then you can see what we can do to okay, that. Okay, awesome, let's go. So you can see the current that we're getting, which is about three milliamps, is a bit lower. The last one was almost 10. The goal for this process, what we wanna get it to do is we wanna get this washed coffee to punch through milk like a natural. It is easy to get different, but the question is, can you get different in a way that is desirable? And so we obviously know which is which. Oh, sure. But it's not a problem, but the question is, if you were a judge on a World Barista Championship stage, would you think these coffees are different in a way that you enjoy, so? Maybe I should try the baseline. So judges, you can expect peach. <laughs> My judges' days are behind me, yeah, please. Yeah. 
Oh, that coffee is incredible as is. It's insane. Wow. Mm. Oh, it is very peachy, very floral, very delicious. It's, it is a geisha. Mm. Oh, they're very different. It's all, I don't even know, it's almost as if the acidity is slightly more nuanced, but the complexity of the fruit and weird flavors are, are much more forward. To me, this coffee, if I had this espresso, yeah. I would say that has to be a natural. It's funky. Whoa, but then what does that mean about funk in naturals? What the heck? The treatment that I developed to get to that point still applies, right. and it's still doing what I want it to do. So you can imagine that if you do want to put this on a bigger scale, you just dial in a recipe and then off you go. All right, so what do you think of that? A little bit more bitter than acidic. Okay. I'm gonna try the second. It's more acidic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's you're, like- You're picking up more acid. Yeah. It's brighter, I feel. It's good. Everything about them is identical, except for the fact we've affected some molecular population. Right. But this has application in like specialty coffee, specialty coffee as well. Yeah, so, so if you can turn your, your morning instant coffee into like cherry juice and dark chocolate, and it comes from the same farm, it's the same cost to the, to the manufacturer. There's just like one additional step, which as you saw is very easy. Right. Doesn't take a lot of time or effort. Um, and you get massive differences in the flavor. Why um, wouldn't you? It's valuable to, I mean, people that drink coffee and people that make coffee, so. That's so cool. Now we're here in the heart of Silicon Valley to experience coffee science with a bit more of a unique DIY style. We'll be visiting with Robert Allo, AKA Espresso Fun on Instagram, who's carved himself a very specific space in the coffee industry. He excites a lot of people with his experiments and pisses quite a few of them off as well. We're gonna go over to his house, tinker with some of this stuff in person and taste the results. So I'm like pretty familiar with some of the stuff you've done. I've seen it online all your like trolley posts and also your like legitimate posts. Yes, I wasn't aiming to do a bunch of coffee science. I just wanted to improve my setup. So like one experiment led to another and led to another. A lot of fun experiments. And then a lot of the goofy experiments are just because um, in coffee and in my day job, I found the goofy experiments you can lead to insight. This is the decent espresso. Sure. Um, this is the Zerno grinder, the first version. This is funny. I like what you've done here because I don't know which side's supposed to lock in. The handle broke. I was looking at other fixes and I thought of what, like, what's, a, what's something that could be like an ode to the Kim Express. You're ready for like the baton. The thing. baton, This right? is great. Except if it- This if is you, also a weapon. I know, if you drop it, you can hurt somebody. You so. could definitely hurt somebody. <laughs> what at the end of the day are you doing? Like what's the goal? in your, your work. So I want the best espresso shot. Right. And and obviously like I, I improved my espresso shot, but w the challenge I found is I kept finding more improvements. But the paper itself, what was the point of using this? I saw them online, your paper stars? Yeah, paper stars. So forever. then you put the star in there underneath the coffee? No, on top. And you want even temperature and even water distribution? Yes, yeah, yeah. and I so think- Why is that controversial? Why do people think that's crazy? It's like extra, right. paying extra attention. This is definitely a lot of technical. And I think it's, like most people would be like, that's a little overkill just to make a cup of coffee, but you're just trying to make the best espresso you yes. can and understand it. Right. Uh, we're gonna do the paper star on this coffee. So okay. then we can pull another shot. So this came out more even. It did come out more even. It didn't come out on one side necessarily. Yes. Feels Cheers. like a roller coaster. It Cheers. is a roller coaster. Oh, wow. Okay, so wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta do a little circle. So, so far this tastes really delicious. I, I don't have any problems with this. Even at the concentration, I could drink this whole thing. Same shot, no star. So this is gonna come out and we can see with this little mirror, if it comes out one-sided. Oh, it really comes out one-sided. Really Whoa, comes out one-sided. that's disgusting. Yeah. It's not too late, we don't have to drink it. No, we got to drink it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. A little astringent. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that, it actually really like is not good. When it comes out wrong, it's problematic. So we're gonna pull a shot without any modification of the screen, without one of these. Okay. Then we're gonna make this more obnoxious. What is this? <laughs> this looks like one of those toothbrushes that played music this when I was a kid. This is a ultrasonic uh, beer foamer. And then if you 
have it on, you see. Whoa. But I found out, like, if you leave it in there for like 20 seconds, it modifies the taste. And it's a little strong. Oh. I feel like I see the light. Yeah. For your next experiment, you've brought over a back massager. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sift coffee. So this sifter has a 500 micron screen. And then on top, I have a 200 micron screen, but this is just so particles don't go up. What you're doing is you're sifting the coffee, but you're also layering it. Why do you layer it? Because it, it allows water to flow even more evenly. And allows, Instead of it being all right. throughout. And then the coarser particles need more time sure. in terms of water exposure than the finer particles. So then you can kind of see these are, these are you're starting to get a little bit coarser. Oh yeah, like they look less like flour and a lot right. more like salt. Look at that. I do the fine on the bottom and then the coarsest particles in the middle. But this one actually like fully saturated the entire right. basket immediately. immediately. They all came out at the same time. Right. Which means there's better water flow. Oh. oh, wow. That's actually really nice. This is by far like the sweetest, nicest shot you've served today. Oh, thank you. This was incredible. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Showing me the magic of the Thanks stars. Thanks for coming out.